Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussions on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime, currently featuring Steven Universe, Miraculous Ladybug, The New Powerpuff Girls, and Archer. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Justin Cummings. Hey, everybody. And Michelle Ander. Hello. Today, Justin, Michelle, and I will be taking your voicemails, questions, and comments on the latest episode of Steven Universe, Hit the Diamond. Uh, every week we have a episode discussion and then a listener feedback show, which is this one, where uh, you guys send questions, comments, voicemails in at overlyanimated.com slash feedback, and then we will discuss the topics you guys bring up this this time about this week's steven universe episode hit the diamond uh check us out at overlyanimated.com and search for the overly animated podcast on itunes or your favorite podcatcher um this we are not getting into anything about steven floats um no spoilers for that or anything involving that episode which is the last one that is aired foreignly not outside of the u.s which is not aired in the u.s yet and there's no release date as of this recording I assume that it will be sometime soon, but um, it's uh, it's we Cartoon Network scheduling in the U.S. It could be even if it's not on the schedule, it could come up like they could change it within a week, and then it could come up. So like, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, I st- we know summer of Steven will be June to August. So that's what they said before they did this whole into deep thing. But yeah, we're done with into deep, so we're gonna discuss that too. Woo! Okay, Woo! last night, um. Sam Delaney and I discussed uh, Hit the Diamond. We're very, very positive about it. I need to hear your guys' thoughts. This is the first time we've heard from you on this episode, Justin. Michelle, Justin, what did you think of Hit the Diamond? Okay, here's my thing. I like the episode still. This is the only episode so far where my opinion of it has actually dropped in rewatching it. Because, I, I mean, I like it. I like the jokes in it. I think it's a good episode all around. But it just didn't get better to me on a rewatch. It almost felt like it got stale after one time. Mm. It's not a bad episode. It's just I prefer the more character-driven episodes than plot-driven episodes. That's it's it's interesting. I agree, I kind of agree that this is a plot-driven episode, which is so stupid because yeah, this is, it's really funny. <laughs> this is a baseball a episode, episode, and this is this is the type of episode in the slice of life, life anime which has nothing to do with the plot. And but, for Steven Universe, it's a plot episode, which is kind of funny. But um, it's weird because I watch like entire baseball anime, yet I don't like this that much. <laughs> well, there's a difference between like an actual baseball anime and then a baseball episode, episode. of uh, yeah. of a slice of life where they don't actually like have anything about the sport or like anything involving that, right? It's just um an excuse to do different dynamics with your characters and stuff like that. Um I, I could see, I could see worse on rewatch. I think it doesn't doesn't hold the same amount of like incredible energy and enthusiasm. Like the first time you watch this episode, it's incredible. And I, for me, I've watched it five times and it's still been incredible. But I could see how it mm-hmm. less. I could see how it lessened. I mean, like originally I thought like almost flawless, and then I feel like there's some down periods to it. So I, I, can, I can understand that. Michelle, what about you? What do you think of Hit the Diamond? I I was just kind of. I, I was so blown away just because like it was absolutely nothing I would have ever expected to see. Um, but it was so great to have it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it was so, it was so good. And I think you know, it's one of those few episodes that felt like so perfectly paced and like all the jokes hit and all the dialogue was like really good. And like, I didn't, I didn't really have any complaints and that's very rare for me. Um, and I think it's definitely one of my top episodes currently. Um, and upon rewatch, like, I didn't really notice, like, it's true, you can never, like, kind of replicate that first, like, emotional response you have to a really good episode, um, because you're going to expect everything after that, you're going to know and anticipate, um, so it's going to be different, but I think it held up really, really well. I thought it was very, very strong, and it's, it's clear that this is one of those episodes that, um, Joe and Jeff put so much care and love into um, to make it that strong. So I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, Joe and Jeff, all the writers, all the producers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's 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 definitely a carefully planned and executed episode. I'm probably more on the Michelle side of this. Like, I think that even if there's like some things that aren't, I mean, I don't know. I'm not gonna judge an episode on me getting bored at. Uh, at, at for two minutes of the 11 minutes on the fifth time watching like if that if that's all <laughs> yeah. that happens then it's fine you know i at last last uh night i said um on the podcast kind of i didn't know i would come up with this opinion but i said you know this this might be the best episode of tv i've seen this year 
um, interesting. I've crossed all shows I watch, and I watch a fair amount of shows. So that's interesting. We'll evaluate that as we go along here. Um, before we get into your guys' feedback, first thing I want to talk about, Rebecca Sugar posted, I posted this for you guys in the Skype chat link, um, the kind of initial concepts from this episode. Oh, yeah. And we have the definitive naming of the five rubies, so I want to talk about that first. <laughs> I think we were mostly on with that last night. We have the visor, the leader, Doc. Um, the one, the feminine slash floaty one is Navy with the Aww. with the gem on her belly button. Um, we have eyeball, of course, the gem and the eyeball in. in <laughs> yeah, first um, slanty. We had army, the one I didn't remember, who is the intense one. And then we have uh, Leggy, who's the newbie. And on the drawing, it says, was made yesterday. First mission. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's the, the the question marks one. And the, it's it's so good. Yeah. I, I, Leggy, yeah, Leggy, Leggy and Navy are my faves. What's your fave, Michelle? Uh, the really intense one. I really like that You like one. Army? It's just so funny. Yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, I, I guess Eyeball could be the intense one, too. I don't even know. Uh, that was pretty intense. Just, Justin, what about you? Who's your fave, Ruby? I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards Visor. Uh, I, Doc. Doc. Doc, yes. Yeah. I thought the name was Visor. I like Doc better. Yeah. I'm I like Navy a lot, though. There you go. So all of them are, yeah, we were talking about this last night. The, just the Rubies are so incredible. Charlene Yee in this episode, voicing all the Rubies, so incredible. Um, and... So I've, yeah, I feel like the two things looking back on this are just the rubies and then our ruby and sapphire and there. Uh, I would love to see things. just the, the recording session for part of this episode. Just put that online of just her. Just Charlene talking to herself. Rubies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd be pretty great. Uh, yeah, she definitely killed this episode. Really great. Um, in a good way. Uh, so let's get into your guys' feedback. We have a, a bunch of general impressions. Good job on the feedback, guys. We have four voicemails, maybe Ooh. one. Oh, that's the record! A, like it's ten. Twice as many as last time. That's and great. Then a, and then a bunch of other, like, a Tumblr asks and stuff like that. Let's start with uh, Tumblr user Sweet Shipper with her general impressions. Hello, with Sweet Shipper again. I thought Hitch Diamond was such a great episode. Ruby and Sapphire is always such a pleasure to see on screen. My favorite ruby out of the vibe would definitely have to be Belly Ruby. And I just <laughs> wanted to point this out. Uh, it's currently Pride Month, which is June. And, you know, Hit the Diamond just aired on the 2nd of June. And I think, I think we can all agree this episode was just gayness to, to the max. Yeah, but uh, overall, I thought this episode was great. I'm definitely going to be re watching it again. Uh, and, uh, yeah, really, really good episode. Have a good one. Yeah, so I, I think no scheduling uh, things were intentional by by Cartoon Network. Definitely not, considering this episode was probably supposed to air like three months ago. But they just held it. She back. is right, though. That episode was gayness to the max. Yeah, we discussed this uh, last night. Um, is the, is this the gayest Steven Universe episode? It's this or uh, or uh, the season finale in season one. And I, I said, okay, okay, Keystone Motel has know. to be in contention. Keystone Lack Motel's in contention too, yeah. And I said uh, this is on par with the Cora finale. I got some flack for that in the comments. They said this is, this episode's way gayer than the. Cora I think finale. this episode might be a little gayer just because there's so much more of it. You I know? said I said quantity <laughs> yes, but importance I would say is the, still the Cora finale, right? So impact my, I'd say yeah. definitely it's questionable, but quality and quantity I'd say. I mean I don't know about quality, but quantity for sure. <sighs> oh, it episode. was it was some quality. This Will, gay moments there, Dylan. Because this was not just hinting at it. This was very clear. Because we've seen Oh, yeah. Sapphire okay, let's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not get into the... The core finale, also very explicit. But yeah, this is more of uh, an established relationship, whereas the core finale presented, like, the beginnings of one, you know. Um, so... Laffy Saffy. Do we, I don't think we got any Laffy Saffy that men mentions this oh, episode. I just right? love saying it. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, Sweet Chipper's fave is Navy, the, uh, the floaty one. Also my fave. Um... Yeah, uh, good stuff. People are definitely really into this episode. As we'll see later, we got some uh, rankings of the five as I uh, asked everyone to come prepared with, and Michelle and Justin actually are prepared. So, uh, Can I call them Maruby 5? Um, only because I love Maroon 5, yes. There you go. Yes, approved. Finally. Approved. Okay, let's. You got that one. Let's, you got that one. That's, <laughs> that's, that's your one that you're going to get for today. Okay, let's take okay. a voicemail from a friend of the podcast, Toon Gal. Hi, this is Tim Gal, also known under the pseudonym Kathy Smith. So, what can I say about Hit the Diamond? <laughs> everything, just everything. It was just amazing. 
I had to look at who wrote the episode, and it was Joe Johnson and Jeff Liu. If either you are by any chance listen to this podcast, please come out and tell us the story behind this episode. Y'all must have had a field day writing this. Anyway, I've sent some other thoughts to Tumblr, and hopefully they're interesting. See ya. Yeah, more from Doom Guy later. But I, 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 it's interesting. I do wonder how much these uh, storyboard artists are involved in the initial planning of the episode. I do think that the Steven Universe process, which is, of course, different from a Korra process or one I know more, starts with the uh, the writer's room, as usual, with Rebecca, the other executive producers, and the writers, including um, Matt Burnett, I Matt know, Burnett sure. and Ben, and, um, ben Le- yeah, Levin, I think, or something like that. Yeah, so there's, mm-hmm. there's a few writers as well. They end up with a general outline for the episode, then they hand it off to the storyboarding teams who turn it into like a full there's not really a scripting process with this it's more of an outlining process that they mm-hmm. turn it into expanded so I, I i do want i do think it was probably more like uh our writers and rebecca and the producers initially came up with it and i think it would be definitely interesting to see <laughs> how they decided like uh who was pushing to do a baseball episode who was uh who was like we need to also do our uh roof fire episode and combine that with the baseball episode definitely some some interesting stuff going into this one I, I would love to see the outline for this one that oh, came yeah. out of the writers' room. If if any of the writers want to, they've they've uploaded some before, I think. So that it's be... very similar to how comic books are made, from what I've seen of the process. Um, it's so interesting. we do have that yeah. kind of comparison. Yeah, I could. I, I know could that, that after they do like a rough, they pitch it to everyone in the room, and that's where like a lot of things either get to okay. stay or change depending on like how much they want something and how hard they pitch for it. Yeah. So Did... that could be where a lot of the little like smaller jokes came into play with other people adding. Yeah, to def- it. I would assume that Joe and Jeff involved in yeah some some part of that. Anyway, I don't know. It's it's a different one that I'm more used to from from Cora. But yeah, just a- anyone involved giving us the the outline the, the that would be so yeah, awesome. It would be great. Um, yeah, def- solid. T- Team effort. So all, all all Steven Universe episodes definitely a solid team effort. Pretty great. Um, and Tumblr ask from Anon says, "Great episode. Wished it was longer. Also, Ruby's really are dumb. Which, if you think about it, <laughs> if you think about it, makes sense. Why they send multiple Rubies on each mission? Interesting." <laughs> Do they oh send? God, do they send like sense. five rubies because they're just too too dumb? They're like as smart as one other. J- <laughs> I hope that's not true. I mean, like clearly, like not all rubies are dumb because our ruby is, you know. She's I mean, fine. Our ruby yeah. has been permanently fused to one of the smartest gems we've ever seen. So I guess that <laughs> that's off true. On I mean, I don't think our ruby is the smartest, but she's definitely smarter than the rest of the ruby. <laughs> those smarter than one the of them's average only ruby? a day old, though. Apparently, so yeah, one of them was an excuse. That's, they have an excuse. <laughs> Um, I, I think, I think the explanation the show gives us is that they send five rubies, they confuse into a bigger ruby, but maybe it also has to do with their, their intelligence. Um, we're going to get into more multiple gem stuff. We have some <laughs> multiple feedback pieces about different types of gems. Um, the teen of steel says great, uh, such a great episode. Love the whole premise of the episode. Lapis being an angsty teen was hilarious <laughs> and such character development when Peridot was willing to give herself up to save the crystal gems. This was the first episode where we saw Garnet split on purpose. Seeing Ruby and Sapphire flirting was the best. Is that true? The first episode where we've seen a split on purpose. Yeah. Yes. In the yeah, past, Garnet is. has refused to split on purpose. Interesting. So, so what do we think of this? Is this a sign of things to come or is this just, it was just very specific to seeing rubies on the planet? I think it was, yeah, the latter. It was just very specific I, because there were like five rubies running around. I yeah. think, I think we'll see more of Ruby and Sapphire on purpose. And by more, I mean, we'll see them twice a season instead of once a season. <laughs> but I mean, I think now that Steven knows that Ruby and Sapphire, I think they're at a position where because of recent events, they are a bit more comfortable being split for short periods of time. So I think we'll see it more frequently, but still not like every other episode. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not every other episode. They're most well, comfortable being fused. Mm-hmm. I do I do think we probably need more excuses to see them individually, especially rubies. I think that we now that we've seen how standout rubies and our ruby can be then we need we need more excuses to see different types of rubies. The sheer number of crystal gems we saw in this episode like in the barn, like that that still makes my jaw drop. Like, yeah, this is this is the most gems there. that we've yeah. seen together in the present for sure. Yeah, yeah, like what six or seven? I guess the answer would have more, um, right? But technically, but they're so. all like in the background. But this was like our team fully assembled, like six gems, fully assembled plus the like the biggest enemy gem team we've seen, right? Oh yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, a lot going on here. And it was in the context of a baseball episode. So, you know, um, it's just 
just putting a play i guess it makes sense putting a uh it into a plot context but yeah definitely definitely interesting um uh john says it was revealed that this episode was ian jq's last as co-executive producer going forward what effect do you ha- see his departure having on the show i think it might have been barn mates oh. this last one but yeah mm-hmm. uh, ian is Ooh. doing a lot of his own stuff now including this uh this, like okay, video game KO. yeah, yeah okay yeah. ko like yeah. what Plaza yeah. So he's a lot of, and I think he's other stuff that he hasn't announced yet. A lot of interesting stuff going on. Um, I don't, I don't think we'll see a tangible effect. I mean, he was. It's. I mean, number two is the number two in the show is leaving. Like he was the number two. So yeah, that that is a big deal. He it's his involvement is still. Uh, is he's? I assume he stayed on in like a uh, consultant. I don't know what the. He, see- he, he's, it, it's just he's not like I guess as day to day with the show, but he's he still has a role with them. It so. worries me because I remember what happened. Uh, last really big time I know someone at Animation Left was Hillenberg leaving SpongeBob, and that wrecked the show forever. Yeah, but it's, this is this is nothing. Ian JQ is leaving a lot of good people to still work on the show. Like Rebecca Sugar is still there. Uh, Matt Burnett, a lot of still people, good people. Mm, a lot of people from the beginning are still there. Like mm-hmm. the the creator is is not leaving, and the re- the writing and yeah. the storyboarding team. The storyboarding team has basically been consistent since the beginning. We've had some additions, but um, yeah, no, that just one person leaving out of the core twenty is not going. Even if they're number two, is not going to have a significant effect on the show. I don't think. Um, but hopefully, hopefully. he did have some really gorgeous animation that I remember, especially like the fusion dances. I will miss that. Hopefully, this is a net positive on the world overall as we get to see his awesome stuff. So, yeah, for (laughs) sure. This is probably really great for him (laughs) and and for like the general content produced at large. I think that that might be a good thing. So, that's good. Um, let's let's talk about uh, Jasper. We had multiple questions (laughs) about Jasper from uh. Jasper, well, Jasper, the friendly ghost. I, nope. I'm just waiting. I'm just, I'm just w- biding my time until we get more news about Jasper. At this never, point. never happening. Let's take a voicemail from Patron Ryan. Uh, Patron Ryan here. Uh, so, Homeworld seems to care that uh, Jasper is missing, and assuming she's not dead or on another planet, how long do you think she'll <laughs> stew underground before she's confronted in uh, in the upcoming episodes? Um, also, we've just come off of a long string of pretty plot-heavy episodes, so do you think that the return to Beach City will also mark the return of more pure filler, like, Onion Friend-esque episodes? All right, uh... Thank you, Ryan, Patron Ryan. I like uh, that he introduces off, himself as Patron Ryan. Yes. Onion Friend is not pure filler. Yes, we got to see the wonderful Amethyst Vidalia relationship. Yes, we saw onion the Vidalia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, onion, onion Friend is probably the only Onion episode I've actually really enjoyed, and I think it's onion, because of... It is <laughs> emblematic of the type of... Anyway, onion um, Trade can go burn in the bottom of my index card. Yeah, I really belongs. hate Onion Trade. He to be actually like, has one of the an one, two file. episodes I, I actively dislike. Let's, let's table this uh, What's Upcoming discussion until the end um but let's talk about jasper um so it's it, it notable buried in the the reaction this episode is that homeworld wants jasper that's interesting. yeah that was a surprise is homeworld against jasper like did they also want... homeworld called jasper the leader of the mi- or mm-hmm. mission we talked about yeah. that last night yeah. which is it's weird because we've heard jasper described as the bodyguard assigned to the mission yeah. Like, by Yellow Diamond. It's interesting because in different contexts, we've heard Jasper and Peridot each be, like, the lackey. Um, so I think yeah. it kind of makes sense for either one of them to be the leader. I, I would say, in retrospect, Peridot, uh, Jasper being a leader makes more sense. Knowing what Peridot knows, um, it does seem Jasper is a higher-ranking gem and stuff like that. Um, so I think that that makes sense. I don't know why Homeworld wants Jasper. That is a good question. Yeah, that is really weird. I mean, they must think, if they think she's the leader of the Homeworld mission, then do they think she's also, like, rebelled against Homeworld? And so they want to bring her in for questioning, or what? I, I think she must provide some value to them. I, I don't think this uh, this means that we're never going after Peridot. Ooh. I still think that's to come. But uh, first priority seems to be to get Jasper back. So what might Jasper know? What might they need Jasper for? I don't know if Homeworld knows this, but Jasper is now the only Homeworld gem who hasn't affected, who has fused yeah. with a different species and used it to her advantage. Mm. Jasper could go back and say, hey, this fusion thing works. Here's what we can do. We can crush them. Yeah, I don't think Homeworld would go after her because of that, but that's a good point. I don't know if we still Homeworld still abides by this no... Um, 
uh, different gem fusion. We saw that in the answer, but that was a while well, ago. Well, Jasper had that attitude. Jasper definitely had an anti-fusion attitude. I don't know if that's yeah. just Jasper. Or if that's no, it's not just Jasper. I mean, that's definitely a homeworld mentality. It was definitely yes. a homeworld mentality as of the answer. But yeah, because everyone like freaked then. out in the answer. When well, they- Paradox kind of seemed to have that attitude too, just not quite mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. quite as heavy. It is possible that since the answer, fusion rules have been more lax. Although it is also very possible that Jasper is the only homeworld non-crystal gem that has fused with yeah. So that's possible. I have a question. Um, yes. Could it be that Jasper is more important as a gym than, like, we assume at this point? Because she did, like, fight in the Rebellion with Rose, so... Yeah, what if Jasper Does is... Does she maybe have more seniority or more importance than just being a lackey, a bodyguard? Right. What if What if she's just, like, a number two behind the, behind the diamonds? I think that's possible. It would make sense, then, that Jasper was the leader of the Earth mission, even if Jaspers aren't important. That Jasper is the only gem that we know of for sure that fought on Earth and is still around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense to send someone who has been to Earth to lead the mission. Yeah, And is still, true. like, as far as I know, loyal to Homeworld. Yeah. So in, so Jasper now may not be important in Homeworld hierarchy total, but when it comes to Earth, Jasper is kind of the go-to. Yeah, I think that's very possible. Jasper could be, definitely seems important now in this context, and i um, interested to see what specifically Homeworld wants with her. I don't think we really have have any sort of clue yet uh no not really not really um qu- question from steve uh anyway uh i had super wild on my mind if a super wild on my mind ended differently and the crystal gems were able to poof and bubble jasper do you think they would have surrendered jasper to the rubies no i don't think so i think steven would not want to do that i think she could give away information about them. Like she, she'd be too. I feel like she'd be too dangerous to just like leave. She with the could rubies. be. I, I think that it's po- very possible Garnet and uh, Pearl would want to do that. Would not care about Jasper at all. I feel that my thinking is, and this is mostly hypothetical. What if Homeworld wants to shatter Jasper? Like they think Jasper's a traitor. I don't think Steven would let that happen, even to Jasper. I don't, so I don't, I don't think Steven would let Stevens. stop it, but he'd probably at least try to keep it from happening. I don't see an indication that Homeworld wants Jasper gone. Um, I don't. Th- I think if they didn't care about Jasper, they would just not go after her. But uh, I do think Steven would stop. Want to stop Homeworld? Mm-hmm. I mean, Jasper, Steven tried know? to save Jasper, or he was concerned for Jasper in Super yeah, Wild Island. Yeah, he even. like yeah. called out to her when he was a melon. Yeah, so she's like falling into the earth. Back when I was a young melon. <laughs> we'll see where this Jasper stuff goes. It's definitely pretty interesting. Um, uh, the, here's what I'll say with with Jasper upcoming. Um, I I would say there's just no way the show does another redemption arc with Jasper. No, it just doesn't but make sense. Dylan, two. They just did two uh, redemption arcs. Yeah. In there, like... there could be some form. I'm not saying Jasper like won't be uh, stick around or won't be a crystal gem, but. We're not doing another redemption arc. It just doesn't make any narrative sense. I think they one. just turned Jasper into the new Lapis, and not in any actual character sense, but thematically, we saw we've seen Jasper like three times. We've mentioned her a couple times, but we know basically nothing. So we're going to spend the next year building up this identity of the character before we actually see the character. So I think Jasper is mm-hmm. now going to take Lapis's place in the fandom of this kind of mystery character. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Lapis, even when we didn't know, like, a ton about Lapis, like, we still got to know, like, a fair amount about her situation mm-hmm. as soon as she got out of the mirror. And Jasper, we really, really don't know. Yeah, we did We did have more with Lapis, yeah, before before she went missing. Um, I, I my, my current read on the Jasper situation is that we table Jasper until... Later. Um, until, like, the... Something might happen, like, if she disrupts the, like, the core, the yeah. cluster. Until something... Like, yeah. Okay, I guess we better, like, do something. But, yeah, I don't think they have any real incentive to go after her at this point. I think that we table Jasper until something happens, right? So, um, Jasper maybe, like, becomes one with the cluster, or <laughs> Jasper, like, uh... Or the home, or yellow diamond comes down and then Jasper emerges. Then, like I'd, I'd, I don't know. I'd be surprised if just we had like a Jasper arc. It'd be. Could a, we see a Jasper yellow diamond fusion if that happens, or do you think that's just out of the question? We I don't do it with those characters. I would say diamond fusions, except with each other, are out of the question. That would be my read on that. 
I think Jess is perfectly diamonds. willing to. Two fuse diamonds fusing would be, to, but I don't think yeah. she'll extend that offer. Yellow diamond's not fusing with Jasper. Yellow diamond, like a blue diamond fusion. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Two diamonds fusing would so, be the equivalent cool. of an Egyptian god card being summoned in Yu Gi Oh. It would just be nope, five no. minutes of just them fusing. <laughs> no Yu Gi Oh references, but yes, that would be it. Would be very interesting. It was um, for thematic purposes. For, <laughs> okay, that's. Do you do you guys think that Jasper will like? be a thing with the cluster and like interact with it i i, I think that because it's um, just sitting there like bubbled like it's not a resolved situation at all and she fell into the earth so yeah. it just feels like I, I think that the jasper and cluster plots are tied right now yes yeah 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 um we'll we'll see more on this maybe later <laughs> maybe not who knows uh let's talk about multiple gems we had two questions on on multiple gems let's take a voicemail from uh, our friend John. Let's play this. Hi, this is John from Baltimore. I was calling about Hit the Diamond. Uh, I really liked the episode. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was as soon as it premiered in France, there were spoiler images all throughout my <laughs> Tumblr live for you. So I had to track down the the episode early and watch it instead of waiting until this week. But it was still one of my favorite episodes this this season and my question to you guys is if you could see an episode where multiple of the same gem from homeworld came which gem would you like to see multiples of show up at the same time thanks yeah, oh, so, that's a good question. So first, yeah, definitely lots of spoiler stuff on Dumbo. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, you, you, you were you no one not... was safe unless they were really good at blacklisting, which I was not. So even that, <laughs> just people, even. people don't tag enough. But yeah, um, that I don't know. This it's unfortunate that this one aired early because it maybe lessened the impact for some people. I was fortunate enough to watch it right away. But yeah, so okay, definitely a fun question. Um, I think this open this episode opens us the the doors up for us seeing other types of gems in multiples. I definitely seems like rubies are the go-to multiples for Homeworld, but what if we see multiple sapphires? We've seen different types of pearls. Um, multiple pearls. Do we want to see uh, quartzes? Uh, oh God, that would be. I really imagine a call center of paradox, <laughs> and it is glorious. Yeah, I could, We definitely had one. Uh, our yellow paradox was a call center, or a, a yellow, yellow uh, pearl Yo, was pearl. like a yeah. call center why why are oh because they're the tech uh representative i just felt like an it department of nothing but paradox yeah i would love to see yelling at everybody clods for not hitting the power button or something stupid yeah i i, I think that's the answer i want to see more paradox yeah i would really like to see another rose quartz or two i think that would be really Quart- interesting yeah quartzes would be good i also want to see uh, if all sapphires are kind of like our sapphire, I think. Oh, yeah. Or an amethyst that looks proportionally different. A normal than amethyst. amethyst. A normal yeah. amethyst. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be Can we realize the psychological harm one. that will happen if Steven ever sees another rose quartz? I know, right? There's so like, many fans. Are there, are there other rose quartzes or are there just quartzes and this is our only rose quartz? Okay. Uh, I know oh. you're really or Dylan, but like rose quartz is an actual thing, so I don't think Rose is like a secret name she uses. I think that's literally because she's a rose quartz. I mean it could just be like only <clears throat> five it could like there's only four diamonds, it could be only a few quartzes, you know, and then this one is just the only rose quartz, that type of thing. Yeah. Like, think about it. Garnet's a real thing, but we only have the one garnet due to these situations. I feel that we could see only a certain number of rose quartzes existing. A certain number, yeah. I don't think our rose quartz is the only rose quartz. It'd be very jarring to see different rose quartz. Yeah, but the especially for Greg and Stephen. Yeah, that would be yeah. that would be interesting. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be fun if we ever get to see that. Here's a uh, another. Here's an ask from Toon Gal. I um, uh, wanted to point out a couple of things I noticed and was wondering uh, about through all my rewatches of Hit the Diamond, one thing that was interesting was how rubies in this episode seem more distinct in personality and appearance than those in the answer. Could this be, could this point to Homeworld loosening up a bit on the rules to allow them for more individuality? If so, could this be a direct result of the rebellion? Are they doing this to keep another rebellion from happening or are they simply utilizing the advantages of variation within a gem type? Could this be the way of preserving their social structure by lessening the need for different t- gem type fusions? Also, oh my God. It, so it's pretty intense. <laughs> That's awesome. We should yeah. have Toon Girl on, on Toon, here Toon, if she Toon wants Girl. to. I think she'd be yeah. really fun to talk to. Also, it was interesting that the rubies were looking for Jasper, even though it was Peridot who disobeyed Yellow Diamond. Is exactly. Jasper going to be punished for Peridot's actions since he was in charge of the, of the mission? Could this start a Jasper redemption arc hint, hint? So no, to the last part, as we said. But, but I mean, it's possible. It is uh, That is an interesting read on it, that um, 
Jasper is being punished because she was in charge for Peridot's actions. Um, that would be interesting. Ooh. Yeah, two two guys have been on the podcast before. Definitely a lot of good stuff. And um, this, uh, are the, the, yeah. So the, the the idea that that Homeworld wants more variation within are the gem types that we know to prevent fusions from the from happening. That's very interesting. Um, I mean, like. <laughs> It's, I, it's... Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I'm not sure I necessarily agree because I think this episode had like a whole episode to kind of bring out their personalities, but the answer had like maybe 40 seconds of an episode. Yes. So there wasn't a lot of room to make them individuals because the point wasn't even to make them that different. It was to make Ruby, our Ruby, stand out because she was the one who was going to be involved in everything. And this, I, I've used this answer before, I think, talking about story for Steven perhaps. But we do need to keep in mind that the answer is being told as like a fairy tale bedtime story. So yes, it's great, but we can't really take it as every minutia detail. We need to remember that it is a retelling and that not everything will be completely perfect. And I know that's kind of a cop out answer, but I kind of keep that frame in mind for all the flashback episodes. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think that originally when the answer aired, I was very much about like, wow, the gems have no individuality. And then I think <laughs> yeah. that we've been contradicted several times since then. So I, I think that at this point is very clear to me that the answer is just a fairy tale and there's a lot of truth to it, but, um, it was, it was really a uh, condensed, like not representative version of what, what actually is going on with Homeworld and gems. And also it was a while ago. So don't get me wrong though. It's super cute. And I will buy that book when it comes out. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. Sure. I think September is when uh, yes, the yeah. answer book is coming out. Definitely going to be good. Um, uh, I, I think there's potentially a lot of that does that being said, that doesn't account for everything. Like it is, no. it is possible that, um, Homeworld is changing, but we just really have no concept because if you if you take the answer as a fairy tale, then we've really nothing to base it on. So I don't know how we can say like the homeworld's different now than it was before if the if our base point from before is not solid. So it's it that is an, ideas like this very interesting. It's all I, I can't really say yes or no or even comment on it all. It's like it's a possibility. Like so is kind of a lot of stuff for homeworld because nothing's concrete with them. Is what I would say. Um, but yeah, that's the very yeah, interesting, really interesting question. Variation in gems. Uh, that since that happened in the answer, I've been very fascinated with that. And gems with regard to individuality are it is definitely notable. Our rubies seem to have distinct personalities to a certain extent. Yeah, but that being said, it's not like they have uh, free will. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I think that's kind of not clear. Like they, they might not know if they have free will. <laughs> yeah, they, it's hard to tell without with them just innately o- obeying, right? So. We don't really know. I would say they do because our Ruby, even in the answer, broke free. So I guess it could have been a variation with with her, but I don't know. Well, more more on this later. Okay. Um, I, I have asked for rankings of the Into Deep Five. First of all, as <laughs> as predicted First by me, all. as predicted by me, and evidence you should listen to Dylan is these episodes had nothing to do with each other. The promo had nothing to do with anything. Cartoon okay. Network. Oh, you're going back to the no, no, no. thing again. Cartoon Network just makes stuff up. Like, seriously, don't <laughs> just anything. Well, these episodes do actually have something to do with each other, and what I will do defend they... them. Okay. What do they have to do with each other? <laughs> just... Super Watermelon Island begins. It's like a clear starting point of this new season. It doesn't fall straight from log date. It is a clear start of. This I mean, these new... are definitely the beginnings of the second half of season well, two. I mean, like, I agree it. with that. It goes straight from Super Watermelon Island immediately into gem drill right Mm -hmm. same old world picks up right where gem drill left off basically paradox still telling the details not much has happened in a time since barn mates picks up again straight from where same old world left off hit the diamond is the only one that's no hit the diamond picks up straight from barn mates okay so So you're saying they connect and they connect in time i could see that yeah not i i don't think this counts as a spoiler you do feel a distinct cutoff point. Yeah, the the next episode does not follow after this. Yeah, so these so. five do flow pretty much one, two, three, four, five. Couldn't I, it just be the second half probably, of the arc, arc then? Yes, but they, the I think that they fair. feel more. Really, they feel more cohesive though. So it's a good like, point. We got a lot more yeah. straight clear you could cut the two episodes together and not notice. We yeah, it's a good point. Um, the answer is that 
these are not meant to be a Steven bomb, but they are meant to be the beginnings of a new season, right? So they're, I mean, it's not like, call this season three if you want. This is really just the second half of season two, but, um, they're, they are, season two. they are meant to be, they are meant to be like groups, right? So it's like, as they're, these episodes clearly air after one another, as opposed to Cartoon Eric has aired some episodes out of order before. So. Yeah. But just in terms of putting these in like an into deep event and like the song that they played, none of that's. Just remember this the next time Cartoon Network does something like this and discount to anything that comes from the network. Um, only stuff that comes in production is stuff you should think about. So I asked us to, I asked everyone to rank these five episodes. The first thing I want to say is that, um, all, I think all five of these episodes are not only good, but like very good, which is kind of crazy because, um, I have my, Dylan grading scale and um, all of these were an, a 9 out of 10 or above which is cr- crazy good so uh, the show has been very strong recently is what I would say um, let's I have two listener rankings here and then we I want uh, uh, each of us to have our rankings at the ready well, I want to start right. at the bottom so I think this is going to vary a lot Justin what is your number 5 for Into Deep this is purely personal bias. This is not objective ranking. You're gonna kill me. Hit the diamond. But I still like <gasps> it. I still like it. I still like the episode. It's your number five out of five, Justin. This Blast, is yeah, that's blasphemy. Me. I'm, that's, sorry. I'm just. You, okay, you, can you there, explain it? Because I really don't understand. Okay, well, this is purely personal. Like I said, I do prefer character-driven stuff. I'm is a sap. Because there's no sap. This last verse is that it? Yeah, that's that must be why. <laughs> okay, that's actually not. It. That's not it. I, my um, okay, so I would say my defense is like this. This episode is kind of all character work. It's it's heavy in the Ruby Sapphire. We get great. It's not necessarily big and in, in big on our characters. I think that's a fair point. They all get their moments. They all but I'm like literal moments. Steven. So if Steven's happy, I'm happy. Right. This this isn't a big. Steven I don't episode, think Steven would like this episode. I think Stephen um, would be like, "Oh, it was it was goofy, it was fun." No, Stephen, it, it's Stephen, not heartfelt. You know, Stephen would be heart. a big fan of this episode. I disagree. I think, but it doesn't have the heart, Dylan. I love no, the heart. There's none of his uh, sh- shipping, Canadian shipping. But I guess like there's other types of shipping. Like, please don't hate me. I still think it's a good episode. There could not be more variation between you and the rest of us. I will say on this one, but we'll see more of that. It's refreshing though. Don't it be is. Just, it is interesting. Just, um, Michelle, what is your number five? Uh, Super Watermelon Island is mm-hmm. my number five. Oh, you're still still a fan though of that one. I am. A, I I am a fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's also my number five. I think it's a clear five for me. Is uh, it's it's like it just compare it to the rest of the episodes. Yeah. Um, it's it's nowhere near close character wise. If we're going by Justin's criteria, so I would, <laughs> I would say it's, it's like never it's, with my criteria. It is great. It is great action like, sequences, and I love the cute stuff with the watermelons. But the I think the that, watermelons is really great. I think that it's a solid um like jump which between the rest of them. Uh, I also have rankings from Steve and patron Rachel. Steve has um barn mates is five. There's no explanation given. Um and, <laughs> just barn mates. and Rachel has uh gem drill at five. So a lot of variation there. Uh Justin, what's your four? My number four is Gem Drill. It was hard. I still like the episode a lot. I think it's great. This is the episode that again, remember, this made me kind of start to ship Steven and Paradox. If you remember that podcast. so yeah, No, not acceptable, but yes. I like this episode. It's good, just not good enough in this situation. Um, Michelle, what is your four? It is also Gem Drill. I, I liked it. I, I did like it more than Super Watermelon Island, especially the stuff with the cluster. I thought it was really visually interesting, what they were trying to do. Um, it just... I don't know. I mean, I guess like some parts just weren't working for me as well as other episodes as a whole cohesive thing, but there were definitely a lot of really standout moments in the episode. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, I think I agree. It's less good. It's less of a unit than, than some of these other ones. My three and four are super close. I guess I'll put, um, barn mates at four, but it's super mm-hmm. close with three. So it's, I mean, barn mates is like incredible. <laughs> All of these episodes. Yeah, are I really think barn mates. Uh, Steve has gem drill at four and Rachel has super wild Island on at four. Um, Justin, what's your three? Super Watermelon Island. Why? What? What are? What do? What stood out to you that we're missing from that one? Okay, the first thing that I really, really liked about Super Watermelon Island was the subtleties. I think of the watermelon scenes. I didn't. There was a lot I didn't pick up on until I rewatched it. 
in just a very short amount of time, we do get such a good sense of this community. I think Mm -hmm. like the sacrifice scene still is just harrowing to me. It's just so subtly done that I actually have to go back and rewatch to realize quite that it actually was planned as a sacrifice. And then I think just the massive fight. Remember, I'm a huge Kaiju fan. I thought this was so cool to see. And then setting up gem drill so well, so beautifully. Honestly, to me, it just flowed very, very nicely and it felt honestly it was better than some of the recent Godzilla movies. So as as discussed before, Justin must be just such a huge fan of the Korra Book 2 finale in order to <laughs> Oh god. To as discussed before, that was I'm a such a disappointing finale, fights. Dylan. It didn't matter how pretty it was. It was so disappointing. Uh, like good kaiju fights. It was well, it was okay. It was still that that to be for the record that was still a good finale, although not as not nearly as good as the rest. Anyway, um michelle what's your number three uh same old world is my number three okay okay we haven't talked about that one yet what uh i mean it's in the middle it's hard to tell whether this is like a good or a bad but i think it was it was really good it just wasn't quite as good as my top two and it clearly was better than my bottom two Mm. (laughs) so i put it in the middle it it was really i mean i I, at the time it was just so great seeing lapis like that but now that we've expanded on her a little bit more i think uh, my expectations are a little higher now as a consequence so it pushed it down a little bit for me still Mm. very good though we'll talk more about that one uh, I have Gem Drill at three. Um, very close with Barn Mates. They're very different episodes. It's hard to hard to compare. Both are very good. Um, Barn Mates really solid and two incredibly funny moments and a great dynamics between characters. Gem Drill just an uh, incredibly standout climax and great Stephen and Paradox moments. So um, very good episode, I would say. Uh, Steve has Super Wet on Island, Island at three. Rachel has a Barn Mates at three. Justin, what is your two? I can't my keep track of what's left, so my it's number two, My number two, and ranked ninth overall in the series for me, according to my stack of <laughs> oh index cards. God. Same old world, and my reason, Stapus, 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 I can show you the world. Yep. That's multiple things. Stapus, Stapus, Stapus. <laughs> Alas. And I can show you the world. Uh, Michelle, what's your two? Uh, barn mates. Barn mates I yeah. actually, they ended up being ranked in the order they aired. <laughs> reverse, reverse order they aired, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, your highest on barn mates out of all of us. Um, just, I mean, it's all of us love it, but yeah, it's you're you're into the the lapidot is what you're saying. Mm, not necessarily. <laughs> it's my number two. It's not my number one. Oh, okay. So there'll be more more shipping to come. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got same old world at number two. Uh, to be, th- this is a reversal from my initial rankings in the spoiler article, but I've not changed my opinion on the diamond, but I've slightly lowered same old world. To me, same old world just is a gorgeous episode. It is, um, it is a very much a cohesive unit, a great character study for Lapis, and I would say probably in the top ten episodes of the show overall. Um, so I think probably might even have it like where right, Justin has it, but I haven't done index cards like him yet. Um, Mine are so, very different than yours. Cat fingers is number four. Yeah, that's not acceptable. So <laughs> I'm gonna dis. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna round table. Move away from that ranking. Steve has <laughs> uh same old world at number two, and Rachel also has same old world at number two. Wow. Yeah, these are my disciples. You're in so good ranking, company. Yeah, they're ranking like me. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, Justin, I, I don't even, I should be able okay. to tell what your number you one is, but. You can't count because my number one is barn mates, so I haven't had oh, okay. That's what I was going to guess. I thought you hadn't said, I don't even remember no. what you said. And but... it's actually, according to my index cards, number five in the series for me overall. This episode, I, I love it. The pacing I loved, the jokes I loved. I thought it had the intensity. It felt. Everything just felt right. It hit all the right notes. It hit the intense moment we needed. It hit the humor we needed. It set up what we needed to set up. It just, it's honestly just a perfect episode. I think, I think, uh, five in the series is high for that. I, I, I would say that's discounting some of the great stuff we've had before. But I mean, I, I think it's, pr- I would be fine with it in top yeah, number 10. Number 10 but is like... Monster Buddies. My ranking makes okay. no sense to yeah, you. Yeah, ranking. No, Monster okay. Buddies is an awesome episode. It was a really, well, I don't even remember episode. what that episode is. So. It's the one with the sense of people. It's the stereotypical so boy king's wild animal, wild animal dies. I will allow you to episode. put Centipedal in the top 50, but not, I, not in the top 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from the person who thinks every episode with like beach city civilians is like a filler episode. 
episode and My that we shouldn't have any more of them. I do think I totally that disagree with centipedal that. Centipedal is going to be important, though, according to every single theory I read. So Yeah, so Centipedal is the only corrupted gym we've had like actual time with. So I'm, seems I'm tired. He loves uh, chips. You I'm love ti- chips. I'm chips. tired of the centipedal theories and the business <laughs> theories. Like, no more. Business please. of some like, centipedal. Stop. Centipedal digivolves into Bismuth. I don't want to hear about Bismuth. I don't want to hear about Centipedal. Like, let's move on. People. You thought we were going to have a, a nice culture discussion, Dylan, but it always devolves into something. Michelle, what is your number one? Uh, hit the diamond for sure. Yeah. Very, just such a, such a good episode. So refreshing in so many ways and so consistently funny. And, you know, all the, the Rue Fire stuff was so good. It's like, you know, Steven Universe with this like, you think like it's gotten as gay as it'll ever get. And then it <laughs> always gets gayer. It's just yeah. such a great, you know, thing to have all the time. So the time. Yeah, it's yeah, just such a good episode. Hit the diamond, my number one, Steve's number one, and Rachel's number one. Um, consensus, ex- except for the person who ranks incorrectly, so we'll call this consensus. But I rank by my heart. <laughs> As Stephen uh, would say. I guess that is what Stephen would sense. do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm going to further my claim now that Hit the Diamond is the number one TV episode this year so far. So I think that, one, there's no... Not a lot of standout TV this year, so. Okay, but. well, Survivor this season is just incredible. <laughs> Survivor, okay, Survivor is, it's hard to compare Survivor. I, I tried to do this, I, on OverlyAnimated.com, I tried to, like, rank my top 10 shows, top 25 episodes of the year last, last year, and it's hard to compare some shows to others. But, um, there's, I mean, this, I think, I think Hit the Diamond would, is a, <sighs> top seven episode of Steven Universe, which makes it the best episode this year because the show is so good. Um, I'm also open to Same Old World, to The Answer, to any other one that aired in Into Deep. Like the show's been very consistently good. To Log Date, I think also is is another one. Um, but yeah, I mean we've had what ten episodes so far this year. And yes. Oh God! It's only wow. all of them have okay. been legitimately good, right? I yeah, would... yeah. There hasn't been a single bad episode this year. What was what was our dud from the first week? Like nothing, right? What was the first episode? I don't even remember. The answer: Stephen's birthday could have been great. Message received: log date. Yeah, it's yeah Stephen's, real, Stephen's birthday is the only thing. Cl- is would be ten out. Of, it would be tenth, but like no. it's still very good. I think it's a clear Stephen's tenth. I'm birthday sorry. Was- important in terms of more i don't i'm not ranking by importance i'm ranking so by quality like, it, was, it was super sweet it was it was i mean it was a good episode but yeah so i think that um why is why is hit the diamond so special why is it the best episode halfway through of this year of television i don't know but you'll tell us I, well that's yes that is what i am segueing into is um, oh my god are you really doing <laughs> Is into me saying us why it's the best? Really? Yeah. So the uh, Ruby and Sapphire stuff is incredible. Um, it, I, I could see there being disconnects for certain people in this, but um, for people who uh, this is this type of thing is very important to, then seeing it um, elicits way more emotions than almost anything else could on TV to a certain extent. Like it's it it takes on a meaning of its own, and just seeing it so cavalierly displayed <laughs> is so refreshing right like it's 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 incredible in addition these characters on their own are just great and um composing garnet like that aspect um the context of what it meant in the episode um was really fun uh i think our little glimpses into all of our characters were incredibly well done um in addition i really think just the five rubies also really make the episode um, in a way that supporting characters have not in, I think these are our best supporting characters of any episode by far for the show. Like every, I, this is the closest thing I would say to a perfect episode because, um, there's just nothing like there's some quiet moments in the middle, but it's just, it's just constant, like high energy, incredible feeling when you're watching it, like funny and, um, the, the great a great combination the show has of uh, being funny, smart, sweet, uh, endearing, um, and also like super socially important that just all combine to make the incredible viewing experience that the show is. Like, I just, I think this is really emblematic of, of why Steven Universe really clicks for, for a lot of us. So hit the diamond, really incredible. Um, can't say it enough. And, uh, 
hope this i i do hope this leads to more <laughs> creative um episode ideas like this one like maybe next we're going to do the bathhouse episode the for, bathhouse episode for a slice of life anime Can yeah I... except they would need to be in japan probably for that to make sense but there's a really good comparison um i don't know if anyone's talking about it yet I remember when The Beach aired for Avatar The Last Airbender, a lot of people talked about how they took what's typically a terrible yeah. filler fan service episode and made it important. I feel like that's – I feel like Hit the Diamond is Steven Universe's The Beach. It took what's typically just filler fan service and actually made it important to the plot. It resolved stuff. It opened up new plot parts. Yeah, I think I think it's a good comparison. Um, I think this – I think this, for once, I think this episode is probably on another level than The Beach. I think The Beach tries too hard to do, be a reference to an old movie. And, like, it's it's doing, trying to do a lot of things. This episode's much more focused. It's, um, like, I really just think the, uh, the Breakfast Club, like, comparisons really limit that episode. But, um, yeah. But I, I love just, Tylee. Azula I mean, was pretty amazing in that it's episode. It's a little though. random. Azula, yeah. No, it is, it is, this has similar, like, high, high humor points. But, yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it's. A, a good comparison to make and probably what you should point to when i say that like no other american show does like the anime type episodes i guess a beach beach episode's not too off off kilter for like uh an american show but but uh yeah um great stuff with with this with all these episodes um gonna be a lot of debate about the next <laughs> the next one that's gonna air oh yes yeah, well. i, I feel like me episode. and justin are gonna You're unite going, for yeah, our we're ones gonna tag team yeah we're gonna Don't be worry. Like, we'll be I've like, I've had I've I've been sitting on it for yeah. weeks. I'm ready to destroy it. Like the good you're ready to destroy. You can't though because it's actually a good episode. That's the that's the catch, Dylan. Uh, Michelle, we'll are we Power Rangers that. or are we a wrestling tag team? Stop. We gotta figure this nope. out. Uh, I nope. think wrestling tag team since nope. I don't watch Power Rangers. All right, we got this. One. <laughs> okay. Uh, next week we will be back um, probably with a round table unless Cartoon Network uh, revises their schedule within a week, which they could. But we will be talking about Lapis and um, a lot of stuff going on with Lapis and Lapis's arc and where the current state of Lapis's arc because uh, something I don't blame this episode for is um, this episode leaves me in a really unsatisfactory place with like Lapis's role in the Crystal Gems, I would say. Uh, I think it's more of the previous episode's fault than this one, but it's not really anyone's fault, but it's definitely something to talk about and also just um, where her character's at and stuff like that. So It was a good excuse to have like literally all the gems together for once, though. It was. It was. It does It does just distract from our uh, Lapis integration, but, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll get into this later. But yeah, talk about Lapis' character next week. And um, of course, whenever the show comes back, as I guess we're on hiatus again. But I, I'm really not a fan of calling breaks like hiatuses. A hiatus is like not, this is not like what a hiatus is. So, but it's okay. We're just waiting on the next episode to be scheduled. Um, this is and Steven Universe Purgatory. This is just the constant state of <laughs> what is yeah. happening with the show. So, yeah, yeah just Cartoon Network, like, not airing these episodes in any of these previous months they've been sitting like a clip from barn mates aired in january they've obviously have the episode for a while it aired the day that, after that aired on like tv though didn't it like it yeah, wasn't it aired even, on like, tv yeah. it was just like why did they, they just, choose it, that they, promo of all no things? they just it was accidentally like they hit the clip or something i think but yeah um I don't know why they need to sit on these episodes for too long i guess they're trying to do the summer event i do think they're trying yeah, to make it a summer show but i want this, you know, summer I want just a random episode of Steven Universe where they just start ragging on Camp Pining Hearts for being on hiatus or just something. Just some meta reference to satisfy the fandom. Do you want to see a Camp Pining Hearts uh, Yes, I would episode. love a full episode of Camp Pining Hearts. Yeah. It, it was like Fairly in terms of Lapis and Paradox getting closer, I, I could see this. that. Lapis and Paradox and Steven just sleep over watching Camp Pining Hearts. Shipping like everything that... Half of the episode I, is like just the show, and then half of it is them reacting SpongeBob to it. SpongeBob has and, done this. Fairly Odd Parents has done this. The Amanda Show did this. I can yeah, defend of, yeah, this I'd, idea. It's a yeah. perfect. No, idea. shows shows definitely do this. I would be a guest star voice. I don't think what we've great. seen of the show is strong enough to uh, <laughs> to warrant uh, in universe thing, but it'll be <laughs> universe. Nope. <laughs> reject the pun but yeah uh what did i just say that's my, oh my reaction. god that oh, was actually cute. a pretty good steven line in the episode <laughs> what did i just this? say but yeah um oh yeah no i didn't pull i didn't pull quotes from this one um i thought we'd have enough to discuss and that was warranted as we're an hour in <laughs> so here's some we... backup for your backup here's some backup Amethyst, yeah Amethyst backup. was so good in this episode she looks so gay i don't i don't know what it was about her <laughs> outfit but it's just, what about pearl it's though? working come on 
Pearl. I, I feel like anyway. Pearl's was also very great. You know, Sophie's, well, Sophie, Sapphire's outfit reminded me <laughs> a lot of, um, that movie, A League of Their Own, you know? Yes. They have, like, this baseball is Alien, dresses. A League of Their Own. In a weird way, like, Stephen kind of reminded me of Tom Hanks in that movie a little bit, too. Just, like, his attitude a little bit. I don't know. I was getting a League of Their Own vibe the whole so time. So is Pearl Madonna? Maybe. A, a more toned down. Pearl is definitely the serious the group, for sure. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's no question. But yeah, well, more Steven Universe uh, discussion to come. Dil- I'm Del Nice, and that's uh, Justin Cummings and Michelle Andrew, overly animated dot com. We heard from some of our patrons today. Thank you very much. And um, our whole podcast Ooh. brought to you by our patrons. You can support us the best way to support us Patreon, other than, of course, sharing, liking, subscribing where, inapp- where appropriate on different websites. And also iTunes reviews. We'd love iTunes reviews. We need iTunes reviews to go higher up on the rankings and for more people to see us. Uh, Patreon, you, the best way other than that is patreon.com slash overly animated. That is our financial support. Shayna, thank you very much to our patrons. Shayna, Mitch Cordell, Beatrice, Nate, Andy, Jamie, Rachel, John, Ryan, and Catherine, aka Hey Now, Fever, Mitch, Cordell, Fusty, Beatrice, Nate, Nathan, Fillion, but like your mailman, Rich Rose, Johnny Bravo, Brian, and Cookie Cat. Um, this weekend, me and Delaney discussing a very important episode of Miraculous Ladybug, the finale, and we're going to get into that. If you missed it last night, Mel and I discussed the uh, climactic season and potentially finale. potentially series finale of Archer, in which a very important thing happened. So you can check out our reactions recorded immediately after the episode, right after that. And... Um, more and next weekend voltron we will be covering that probably very immediately potentially all at once look be on the lookout for our coverage of voltron it's going to be very exciting cora 2.0 that's to come yes yes so last comments justin michelle you good block updates since oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. plug the plug the blog yeah. sure okay so plug on the blog uh today just went up robo retro part three robotech if you haven't been reading that series check it out a lot of cool mech anime history stuff we've done ro- uh, we already did voltron uh monday as always you get your total drama review soon coming up i'll have a hidden gems on Cornel and bernie and then also in the works a discovery kids episode and at some point, Ladybug review of me, plus all kinds of fun did you know trivia kind of stuff in that. So that's what you have to look forward to. Oh, well, and the last Robo Retro, code. which is Transformers. So mm. go to cool. overlyanimated.com, click on blog in the uh, menu bar, and you can check out a bunch of articles by Justin and occasional articles by other people. Very <laughs> there brief articles by me. <laughs> yes, there you go. So check out all of that at overlyanimated.com. Thank you very much, guys, for listening and sending your feedback. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.